Joining us now from New York is Diogo Costa, a Brazilian political analyst at King's College in London. Thank you so much for your time. Now, how do you expect the Senate to vote here? Uh, there are reports that uh, Rousseff is actually cleaning out her desk. Do you actually think that this could be the end for her? Well, this is maybe a fatal blow to Rousseff's administration. This is a government that went from being the most popular government in Brazil's modern democratic history to the most unpopular one. And it is true, she's being punished for, not for corruption, but for fiscal mismanagement, for fiscal responsibility. Uh, Brazil is now in a deep recession, the worst recession in a century. GDP shrunk by 3.8% last year, supposed to decrease by a similar amount this year. There are 11 million people unemployed. So certainly this is a punishment, especially an economic punishment, to her government. And of course, it's not going to be the end of the story here. Uh, many reforms will have to be passed in this transitional government that succeeds Dilma, which is likely to happen uh, tomorrow. Uh, so this is not the end of the story, but it might be the beginning of a new chapter for well, Brazil. She's certainly not the first politician though, in Brazil to be accused of corruption here. I mean, the, the vice president, uh, Michel Temer, who should or might take over if the Senate votes to suspend Rousseff, certainly isn't clean either. Do you expect the corruption probe to oust him as well? Yeah, it's important to see that the impeachment process and the corruption probe processes are running in parallel. So we saw Eduardo Cunha, who was leading the uh, impeachment process in the lower chamber in Brazil, to be ousted because of corruption accusations. So certainly what we're going to see is uh, an impeachment that falls, follows through. And now Juma will have 180 days suspended from office. Uh, but what's important is that the judiciary keeps its independence so the, the corruption procedures can keep moving forward. I mean, with the um, Olympics coming up, it's going to be interesting to see who actually ends up taking the torch in their hand. How do you think this is all going to affect the Olympics? Well, what we're going to see now is a president that is very unpopular, but maybe he can be a technical president. So it could be that we have a transitional government like we had in 1992 with Damar Franco, which is a government that was able to uh, end hyperinflation and restore macroeconomic stability in Brazil. And now Temer has this challenge to actually boost productivity and restore economic growth. Uh, and with the Olympics coming up, uh, it seems that Brazil is going to have its main challenge. It's going to be the focus of international attention. And people are going to be focused, of course, on the legal cases against Brazilian politicians, especially in Rio de Janeiro, which is uh, a city and a state that have been deeply affected by this recession. So it's very hard to see exactly who is going to be uh, the, the leading figure in Brazil to do these reforms. In 1992, was Fernando Henrique. We still don't know who this person is going to be. But certainly, this is going to be the key figure now in Brazil moving forward. Mm, it's going to be interesting also to see how the people of Brazil react to uh, uh, the proceedings. Okay, thank you very much for your contributions there.